Hi everyone, it's Marianne, and for today's video, I'm sharing with you my fall favorites. Thank you so much for joining me today. And you might be thinking, fall is still going strong. We're not, or we're barely in the middle of it. Why are you already doing your fall favorites? I am doing my 2022 year end favorites. So I kind of like want a little bit of gap between my fall favorites and that video. So that is why I'm doing it now. And a couple of months passed since I did my summer favorites, which at the end of August. So I had like September and October. So it's kind of be like September, October favorites. We're just going to name it fall favorites. So like the previous seasons, I'm going to share with you my favorites from fall, starting with my houseplants and anything related to my houseplant hobby, and also share with you other favorites from the season, like from travel, products, skincare, beauty, fashion, food, etc. So before we get started, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Marian. Welcome to My Wasteless Life, where I take you along my houseplant and sustainable lifestyle journey and share with you some of my tips and tricks along the way. So if that type of content interests you, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel before the end of this video and make sure to like this video and comment down below. I would love to hear from you, especially what are the things that you're currently enjoying this fall season. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. When it comes to my houseplants, my favorite from this fall season is surprising, at least for me, because this is a genius of plant that I have largely stayed away from. And now two of them are my favorites for the fall season. And the very first one is my philodendron varicosum. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I've gotten this from a plant trade and I got it as a struggling cutting. And a lot of people say varicosum is a hard plant to start with with a philodendron, at least with a climbing type of philodendron. So I wasn't really expecting much when I got this. I mean, I was getting it for free, so why not take a chance on it and see what happens? But I wasn't really having any high expectations on it. Since I have other philodendrons in my care that I was still easy care philodendrons, but are not doing quite so well. So with this one, I didn't have high expectations, but among all the philodendrons that I added into my collection this year, at least the climbing type, this is the one that has been thriving really well. And the leaves that you see now all are new growth. The original leaf that it came with, I think I pruned it off once the first two leaves came out. And this one just came out over here. Look how beautiful that is. And you can already see the fuzzy petiole and there's another new growth coming out. And if you've seen my YouTube shorts, I gave it a D-shaped moss pose, similar to the one that I gave my Epipenum pinatum, and I'm really hoping that it would really take to it. I think it would, and now that there's a new growth coming out. And what I really love about this philodendron varicosum is the way it is growing. And this part of the leaf, the patio, and I, it's not the stem, uh, my science, my grade, school science is failing me now, but this part, the petiole down, is not very long. It's actually very short and compact. And I've seen a lot of philodendrons with like really long petiole stem part, and it's way too long and it occupies way too much of the moss pole, but this one doesn't and the leaves are just like stacking up the way I want to. So I'm really excited and happy about that. And I can't wait for this to mature, though I honestly don't know if I could handle it large. I, no, it's not that I can handle it large. I don't know if I have a space for it when it becomes large, but we will see. But I'm really happy with how this is going. For a plant that I was told it's not an easy care plant, it is so far easy care for me. Knock on wood, hopefully that it stays that way. But yeah, so my favorite for the fall season, Philodendron varicosum. And my second favorite plant this fall season, the Pink Princess Philodendron. I know, shocking, if you watched me for a while, I was very much not anti-pink princess philodendron, but I never saw the appeal in it. But this one, like the philodendron varicosum, I got off a trade and it was a slightly smaller plant. The top three leaves that you see now are all new growth. So basically it had the two leaves down here that has the variegation and a couple of baby leaves that I have since trimmed. But I can see the appeal in it. And I like that so far it is an easy care plant for me. Not that I've seen people complain that the Pink Princess Philodendron is a finicky plant or hard to care for, at least for a bush type philodendron, but I don't think people were kind of like also bragging how of an easy care plant the Pink Princess Philodendron is. So I'm really glad it's doing well in my care. As you can see, the new growth don't really have that much variegation. I was told by the person who treated 
this with me it came from a variegated plant and i do see the variegation in the stem itself i'm just hoping it would show up in future leaves i've seen other pink princess philodendron too that the pink doesn't always appear on every single leaf so i kind of expected it with that and kind of like with my other philodendron the philodendron white wizard i was also told that when it's in a juvenile form the variegation don't really show up until it matures a little bit more so i'm hoping this is what's happening with this one i do see some of the pink showing up in the newest leaf and i think it might also be in the new growth because you can see how the variegation is gonna go depending their placement on the stem for the last three leaves the pink variegation has been on the rim so that's why the pink is only showing up at the very edge of it if at all as opposed to the one that has the pink variegation the pink variegation is located in the middle of the stem what part of the leaf is that the petiole but the petiole is just the top part right it's not the whole thing but okay so the variegation is in the middle of the stem slash petiole and it manifests itself a little bit more once it unfurls a new leaf so i'm hoping with the new growth i can barely see it because it's still forming but i can see it somewhat not so much on this side i don't know if you could even see it on camera not so much on the side but a little bit more in the middle so hopefully that one would have a little bit more pink variegation but i'm patient i mean i got this for free and now that the pink princess philodendron prices have gone down it has become so much more common like the ones that i saw at plants alive in silver spring and in green street gardens virginia you can get them for 80 to 125 dollars really good size very high variegation and if you want to go through the cost of farms route you can get it for 50 dollars on their website it's always out of stock though so you have to be like really on top of it if you want one but people also have spotted it in their local grocery stores and big box stores for like 20 25 dollars so if you're lucky you could also get it that way but i'm really glad that the prices of the pink princess philodendron has drastically gone down because before it became the it plant or the plant that everybody wants like the monstera elbow that's another plant that i really wish the prices would just drop already but that one i think i feel is kind of justified because it is so hard to grow and so hard to keep alive if you don't know a lot about monsteras i mean <laughs> speaking of myself guilty but yeah the pink princess philodendron like any bushy philodendron type house plants has the same level of care or the same level of easiness when it comes to care so really no reason for it to be that expensive and if i'm being honest there's so many other like aglonemas or different bacchias that have prettier pink variegation than the pink princess philodendron but they don't carry like the same type of prestige as the pink princess philodendron which is what i find weird and funny about the houseplant community the value we attach to different types of plants like how do we determine that this plant is the more valuable one with its pink variegation as opposed to another plant that has a nicer or prettier variegation but we sell that for cheap this one we don't i get it if the plant is actually rare rare as in hard to grow hard to propagate and hard to keep alive not rare just because we say it's rare or we're kind of like you know manipulating the supply and demand of the plant which i think what happened to the pink princess philodendron it was just a huge manipulation of the supply and demand the pink princess philodendron used to be a very cheap plant before it became instagram famous so again i'm going on a tangent but definitely a favorite this fall season even though i kind of trash talked it a bit is the pink princess philodendron and when it comes to my favorite fall plant products i'm going to go back to my philodendron varicosum and point out the d-shaped moss pool i've done several videos on plants in poles and i saw one tiktok says the choke plant poles currently have on the houseplant community this year is unreal and i guess i think so because a lot of us who started their plant journey during covid or maybe even a little bit earlier than that i started mine in 2019 a lot of the plants that we have now have grown and need support so i guess this year definitely become the year of plant poles and my favorite one out of all the plant poles that i tried is this d-shaped moss pole just because of how well it's been working for my apropenum pinatum and now currently working for my philodendron varicosum i intend to convert or give all my philodendron plants at least the one that i plan to keep or survive in my care in the same d-shaped moss bowl and maybe even some of my syndapsis plants or apropenum pothos plants that i currently have that i want to train growing up 
So we will see, and it is space saving for me. The only thing that I don't like about this is it uses up moss. And sphagnum moss is a non-renewable resource. That's why I kind of try to use it very minimally. And that's what I love about the D-shaped moss bowl. I don't use as much moss to be able to fill it up, but I'm still using sphagnum moss. So I'm looking for alternatives to it. Cocoa coir is one good alternative, but I'm also doing more research on the sustainability of cocoa coir. Yes, it is more readily available than sphagnum moss, but what I've learned so far, or what I'm currently learning when it comes to sustainability, we shouldn't just focus on the end of life, but we should look at the entire life cycle of a product. With cocoa coir, it comes from coconut husk, which is mostly imported from Asia, particularly Southeast Asia, South America, largely in the global south. So I kind of like also want to see what is the impact of that. But maybe getting sphagnum moss from Canada or maybe just a little bit south of the border that is sustainably harvested and I kind of like, you know, maintain properly and reuse as much as I can is also a sustainable option instead of trying to import cocoa coir all the time. So again, looking into those things, learning as I go and sharing what I know with you. So if any of you know better, just share in the comments because I would love to learn from you. But right now I am using sphagnum moss from Better Grow and according to their website, their sphagnum is harvested in Chilean wetlands and is harvested by hand and they don't over harvest. But that's the claim of the company and I haven't really found any third party or independent party fact checking that, but that is what they say on their website. Plus it is the most affordable sphagnum moss that I could find and it was like $5 per pack. I would link this D-shaped moss bowl in my description, but everything is in my Amazon store if you wanna go check it out. So even though fall still have like weeks to go and a lot more things could happen, but one favorite thing that I did this fall that is a definite favorite is going to the Global Citizens Festival and being invited by YouTube and Global Citizen to take part in their Creators for Climate Summit in New York City. So that was definitely an experience to remember for me, not just for this fall season. It is my very first YouTube event. Well, not really. I've been to like a few other YouTube events in person, also in New York City, but this is kind of like the first big one where YouTube like really took me to the New York City. They took care of everything. I was one of 50 creators invited to take part of this summit. So again, I don't know how I got invited. I was just like very happy and very fortunate to be there. And, and one of the things that I was really grateful from that summit is meeting other creators that I've been a fan of for a long time, like Chef John Kong and Becky from the Sorry Girls, and also meeting other creators that I'm not familiar with, but now I'm like such a huge fan of now that I've met them and seen their content and like, really amazing group of people and I'm really happy to have met them and hopefully now starting friendships with them because they're great people to really know and just have in my life whether either just creatively as a content creator or you know personally professionally amazing group of people that I'm really lucky to have met and of course the YouTube team they were amazing the Global Citizens team amazing from Mike to Lulu Danielle Everyone, you guys were amazing. And of course, the summit itself was great. We got to meet Priyanka Chopra. She spoke at the very beginning and we learned a lot about sustainability. I thought I already knew a lot about sustainability, but when I came there, there are so many things that I need to learn, also need to know, and I'm really glad that I was imparted that knowledge. So I'm really grateful for that. And of course, the Global Citizens Festival, it was an amazing experience because I haven't been to a concert in like forever. So I was able to get to see the Jonas Brothers, Mariah Carey, Metallica. We even got to see Metallica during the sound check. And the craziest part of that experience is getting on stage in front of 60,000 people with Priyanka Chopra and with other YouTube creators. It was like a very surreal experience. Basically, we were there for just like a couple minutes and Priyanka just saying, this YouTube creator is pledged to use their platforms to promote climate change or, you know, promote sustainability, which I mean, I plan to do anyways. I don't have to be on stage to actually pledge that, but it was still a great experience to have and it was really wild. And speaking of sustainability, when it comes to sustainable skincare products, it's hard for me to find one that 
is sustainable and not green washing at all that actually works because sometimes yes it's sustainable but it doesn't work for me so i don't keep using it so that is why i'm very glad to have found crave beauty now this is not sponsored i bought this products myself but the way that i found out about crave beauty is because i met leah which is the founder of crave beauty at the global citizen summit and i've heard about crave beauty on tiktok because i think one of their products gone viral within like the skincare talk and i think it was their cleanser that went viral but i don't really know much about crave beauty until i met leah and learned that her product is a sustainably made product and she runs a very sustainable company. And what I love about Crave Beauty is they're very open where they add in their sustainability journey. Like, okay, this part we're being sustainable, this part we need to work on. And they're also very open about the amount of waste that they create as a skincare company. And they're actually having a pop-up this weekend in New York City from November 3rd to 6th. I would also link the details down below if you're ever in New York City, go check it out. So basically they have a lot of their products wasted from production. I think one of them is a the great barrier relief when they're testing out new packaging for it. So instead of throwing that away, she is giving away those products and she also have like a couple of products that instead again of throwing them away, she repurposed them and just selling them at cost. I think which is the matcha hemp wash and the other one is the makeup remover which I've heard lots of great things too. So you can purchase it on their website again at cost and it's I think $8 and $12 respectively. And I think there's still some left. So go check it out. And if you go to their pop up, you can, I think you can also find it there. And all the details will be in the description. And no, Leah didn't ask me to talk about this in my video, in my channel. She doesn't even know that I'm mentioning it. I don't think she even knows that I have her products. Like I bought this again myself and I never told her I want to test it out for myself and see how well it works for me. I've been using it for a month and I've been using this like two to three times a week. I use it on my face, on my neck, and even on my armpit because it kind of helps kind of like exfoliate the underarms too. And so far it has been working out well for me. But of course, whenever you try a new skincare product, it goes through a purging process. So I did experience a little bit of like breakout here, but not so much. But I do like how my skin feels because I feel like my skin looks very tired and dull lately, especially now that we're transitioning from summer to fall the season the air is getting drier and i know it affects my skin a lot but ever since i've started using this I, I see the improvements in my skin but like i said i'm only using it for like almost a month now we'll see what happens after like i finish the bottle along with the serum which again i also use after i use this i don't use this every day because this is only like if your skin is having issues use this so i feel like after i ex exfoliate i treat it with this serum i'm very excited to try her other products too looking forward to that as well but i still have like cleansers and moisturizers so i kind of like want to finish those off first before i buy new ones and try out her cleanser and her moisturizer but yeah crave beauty go check it out i'll have the details down in the description when it comes to fashion, I have a favorite this season. I didn't in previous season because I don't really buy a lot of clothes like that. I'm more of like use what I have and then buy new if I need to. I only probably buy new clothes when I'm traveling and need something to wear, but not so much in any like any other occasion. Like yeah, this year I probably shop more than I have that I did previous years because I've been traveling more this year. But even then, you can see my previous travel videos and travel vlogs, I do wear the same thing over and over. So I might just have bought one or two new pieces each time I have to travel, but I don't like buy a completely whole wardrobe each season. But one of the favorite things that I bought from this fall is this boots, this chunky ankle high boots from Blowfish. And I got this from Famous Footwear. And what I love about this, this one is made of recycled plastic. So this part here is made from recycled plastic. Not everything is from like a post-consumer or recycled material, but this part is. And I'm kind of glad about that because I was looking to find a boots that I could wear when I was in New York City that has some height to it. So like you see, so it's like the chunky type of heel, but I could walk on because whenever I'm in New York, I do a lot of walking and I need like a walkable boots to be on. And I have a couple of boots, but they're not walkable 
or fit the attire that I was going to bring with me. So I'm really glad to have found this. And this one is made from recyclable plastic because whenever people are like, oh, my shoes or my bags are vegan leather, vegan leather is just plastic. So this one, yes, it is plastic. It is quote unquote vegan leather, but I'm glad that it is from recycled plastic. So I didn't feel too bad purchasing this one. And it's also comfortable. It's stylish. It's like a trendy boot right now. And I really like it. And it goes with a lot of my clothing for this fall going into the winter season. And I can still see myself wearing this next year or the year after because, you know, it's boots. It's like something that I could always use during the cold season. And I don't know if you can get this online. Like I said, I got this from Famous Footwear at an outlet mall. But if I can find this brand online and link this exact shoe or something similar to it, you can find it in the description as well. I've been doing a lot of talking like since so Thursday. But this is my next favorite product is this tumbler from Starbucks. Is This one is from their fall collection. I got this maybe like a couple weeks ago. I saw someone had this one of the Disney creators that I watch that is also very into Starbucks and I saw it in her channel and she said this just came out from the fall line of Starbucks. They always come up with new tumblers every season or every like holiday. They're just and they're about to come up with their Christmas cup. I think by the time you're watching this, it's already out. So if you're a Starbucks girly like me, go check it out. And I know what you're thinking. Is it sustainable to be buying that many tumblers? No, it's not. I have to admit, it is not. I already have like two or three other Starbucks tumblers, not even including the hot cups that are reusable that I do use. This is the thing. Every tumbler that I buy, I use. This is kind of like my excuse or loophole into it. They're just not up on display. I do rotate them, and that's kind of like my reasoning. If, like, I, if I rotate them every season or every month, they don't get like old or they don't break. Actually, one of my tumblers already broke like the lid because I dropped it. So my reasoning is if I rotate them, they don't get old quickly, they don't break as quickly, then I get to actually reuse them all the time and make them last longer and make their lifespan longer as opposed to like running them down within like a few months, throwing them away. It's bad reasoning, I know, it's bad reasoning, but you know, work in progress. But I do like this one. It is like fall themed with the orange, but it's like a very muted orange. And for some reason, this pattern of the tumblers, this is the only pattern of Starbucks tumbler that I buy. This one has a chokehold on me ever since I saw it on a Disney World 50th anniversary tumbler, which I still don't have. They came out with the pink version of it and the blue version but I really want the purple version because I already have the pink one from Disneyland and I just want that 50th original one and they still haven't restocked it. So, and the 50th anniversary is ending. I think it's ends, it probably has ended already because it was only supposed to last up until this October or maybe it goes on until next spring. Who knows, but I kind of wish to still have that tumbler. But yeah, for some reason this, pattern this the sign of the tumbler just have a chokehold on me and normally i would just get the tumblers if they have like significant commemorative reason like the disney world 50th anniversary the disneyland version the hawaii exclusive starbucks cup this one doesn't really have a much significance except that it's fall themed but again the, the color is what got me and the design is what got me because i haven't seen a lot of starbucks tumblers with this design that they just sell i mean I think they did, but not as pretty as this one. So as you can see, it's so pretty. So yeah, so I got this and this is like my fall Starbucks tumbler. And I'm not trying to be a Starbucks tumbler collector because that plays into like the overconsumption and overconsumerism, which, you know, very much against my quest for a more sustainable lifestyle. But again, like I said, work in progress. Plus, you know, how many reusable tumblers one can have. But as long as I can justify that I am using what I'm buying, then that's okay. But I don't think I'm going to be collecting lots and lots of tumblers, just like maybe one for each season. So I have like room for one more tumbler to add to, to, add to my collection. And then we'll see where we go from there. And my next favorite from this season is this nail polishes from Essie. I've done a couple of shorts, me applying this on my nails. So I think the first one that I did was 
using these two shades, which is, I can't read. This one is the crop top and roll, and this one is the eyes out FX filter. This is actually the star of the show, this one. It just makes the nails so much better. I like this one, recreates the viral Hailey Bieber nails. Um, I know it's ironic I'm talking about nails when my nails looks like this right now. And my fall colors is the Binge Worthy, which is this beautiful muted gray. And this other one, the Cold Brew Crew, which is a brown color. Like this two by themselves is great, but when I top it off with this one, it does something magic. Like for some reason, this one and this one creates an iced purple look, which I did for like a Midnight's Lavender Haze inspired nails on my YouTube shorts. And this gray one with this one, creates a beautiful iced light blue. So I think that is going to be my nails for the winter season slash holiday season. And I really like this combo. Everything is from Essie. I would link it down below. I got this from CVS. You can probably also find it from Amazon or anywhere you can buy nail polishes. I do buy it from CVS because I only paid full price for one of these. Like one of them, I got 50% off or 40% off. The other one I got for free and the other one is probably with like CVS bucks or extra bucks if you know what I mean if you go to a CVS you know so that's the only thing I like about shopping at CVS I do get a lot of discounts so I don't pay full price for these nail polishes because they can be expensive and I get the smaller bottles just because I know I don't go through the entire bottle of nail polish and then they just dry out and then just end up becoming waste and with this one I know I pretty much going to be using them up before they dry out because I've been doing my nails kind of like religiously but right now it's not done I just have like nail hardeners on it because I tried to give my nails a break in between nail polishes but I think the next one that I'm going to do is probably because I just did this one so I'm probably just going to try the nude again but I don't like this one by itself because it's so hard to apply by itself but we'll see I just need to get better at doing my nails that's why I try to do it as often as I can, I want to go to a nail salon and get like the pretty acrylics or the gel nails. But one, they're expensive. Second, again, not the best for my nails and also not very sustainable. But on occasion, I do like to get my nails done. But like this year, I've like every time I travel or there's a special occasion, you know, go get your nails done, go get your nails done. But I just ended up doing it myself and I seem to prefer it that way now. So. That's what I'm doing. So I think at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I'm going to also talk about my favorite food this season. I don't think I have a favorite food this season yet, but I'm currently doing like a pumpkin recipe series in my YouTube shorts where I'm making lots of different pumpkin recipes from the pumpkin that I tried to create as a chia pumpkin that failed, but I don't want to waste the pumpkin, so I cut it up pureed it and I'm not like trying to make all kinds of recipes with it like from savory to sweet desserts for meal preps for Thanksgiving dog treats so I'll link the playlist to that up here if I still have space in the cards but definitely down in the description if you want to check it out with my pumpkin recipes I'll be doing lots of recipe videos in my YouTube shorts this entire month maybe leading up to Christmas like especially for vlogmas i'm actually not doing vlogmas but we'll talk about that later <laughs> but yeah so no favorite food for this fall season go check out my recipe series and my youtube shorts but when it comes to pumpkin stuff this is my favorite the vanilla pumpkin scented candle this one is from trader joe's it is made with natural soy wax blend lead free cotton wick and I like the smell because yes, you can smell the vanilla and the pumpkin, but it's not overpowering. So like whenever I kind of like want to relax or like I'm busy and I kind of like, you know, calm down my stress, I just like light this up. As you can see, it's like almost halfway done and it just smells good. And it's like a very relaxing fall scent. So I really like it. And it's like $3.99 from Trader Joe's. Candles can be very expensive. So this is kind of like a very affordable slash sustainable option if you want like a fall scented candle that you would definitely use up within the season, but it's also like in a recyclable tin and made with like sustainable materials. Oh, so let's talk about Vlogmas. Vlogmas, I am not doing it this year, but also I am doing this year. So hear me out. So for a lot of us, 
Christmas season, the holiday season officially kicks off right after Halloween ends. So for me, why should it be any different for the content I put out on this channel, especially now with YouTube Shorts? So I won't be doing Vlogmas the traditional way, like I'm not going to wait until December 1st to put out my Vlogmas videos. I'm going to start next week. Yes, next week. So typically what I do every year is I put out my fall plan collection video like right after Thanksgiving or right before Thanksgiving and then I kick off Vlogmas right after that. But this year what I'm doing is I'm going to push the fall plan collection video early. I'm going to put that out next week and then after that I'm doing the videos that I typically do for Vlogmas. I'm just not going to call it Vlogmas. And YouTube Shorts in December, I'll be doing Shortsmas. So every single day, I'll be putting out videos that is Vlogmas or Shortmas themed. But I've been already putting out videos on YouTube Shorts daily anyway. So it's not going to be that much different. But it's just going to be called Shortsmas on December. But as far as my typical Vlogmas videos that I do for my YouTube channel, Every year, I'm not going to wait until December to put them out and just cram them within the entire month or within like the span of two or three weeks. I'm going to spread them out from November to December just to give each videos room to breathe in and kind of like, you know, really spend some time within each videos instead of like rushing to make them for Vlogmas because I have to put one like every other day or like every day for that month. So that's what I'm going to do. Starting with my fall plan collection video next week, Vlogmas officially, unofficially kicks off here in my wasteless life. We're just not going to call it Vlogmas, but it will still be like my typical Vlogmas videos. So there's a lot to look forward to from my long form videos to my YouTube shorts. So I hope you stick around. I know a lot of my new subscribers are coming from the YouTube short side. I hope you're also watching my long form videos. If you are from YouTube shorts watching my long form, please say hi down in the comments. And if you're a long time long form content viewer of mine and you haven't seen my YouTube shorts yet, do check them out and see if you like that type of content for me as well because with that one I tend to experiment a little bit more and do a lot more stuff that is outside of what I typically do in my long form videos so I would appreciate your support there as well if you're watching this video and you stuck around up to this part or I don't know how the young people do it now but yeah, hearts to you. Thank you so much. Whether you are a long form content viewer of mine, YouTube Shorts viewer, new subscriber, old subscriber, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, do subscribe. I come up with videos every week. And if you haven't yet, check out those videos up here until my next one. And if you found any value in this video and would like to give me extra support, please click the super thanks button down below. And any super thanks you sent me will go back to this channel and help me create more and better videos for you all. And if you haven't yet, check out these videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other and have a plentiful day. Bye.